Hi everyone, my name is Sam Ricardo and I'm a field application engineer at Kimmet. And today I will be the host for our webinar titled Construction and Characteristics of Chokes. I do have a few housekeeping things to go over. First of all, if you have a question, uh, please submit it through the Q&A box and we will go over all the questions at the end. If we do not have time to answer them all before the, our end time, which is 9.30 Eastern, uh, we will reach out to you and answer uh, your questions after. Um, also, this presentation will be posted in our engineering center on our webinar page, so please look for a link for that as we'll be emailing it out in the next few days. So our presenter today is Alexander Nabel, who is a field application engineer, and with that, I will hand it over to Alex. Yes, hello, Samuel. Thank you for the introduction. Um, as Samuel has just mentioned, my name is Alexander Nebel. I'm field application engineer at Kemet since 2017, and I'm field application engineer for passive components already since 2011 in other companies. Our topic today is related to chokes, and um, here is an overview about the next points I will show you in the uh, next 30 minutes. So first, I want to give a brief update on core material and permeability. For those who attended uh, the last presentations might have heard this already. The second point is the difference between EMC and EMI. Then I want to explain the difference between differential mode and common mode, and also differential mode chokes and common mode chokes. Then I go more into the product side, explain the winding style and the core style. And finally, I show you the, an overview about the Kemet product series, which are in our focus range. So first, let's go back to the core material and permeability. Today, we are in presentation four of five of our inductor series. And I have showed this already last week, so I will go just shortly over it. So again, we all know that different core materials in an inductor will be active in a different frequency range. So what we can see here is now we have two different materials. The one is manganese zinc and the other one is nickel zinc. And we can see that the manganese zinc is active in a lower frequency band and the nickel zinc material in a higher frequency band. So here, let's say the manganese zinc around one megahertz and the nickel zinc is just rising at one megahertz. So depending on which area of frequency you need attenuation, you can choose the right material. So that's to make it simple. Unfortunately, it's a little bit more complicated and we need to know that um, if you take the mu r, the um, permeability, the magnetic permeability, um, it's a value something in the thousand range. Um, for example, this is 18H, it's a material uh, description from us, means you have 18,000 mu r and this one has 15,000 mu r. Well, we all know by increasing the um, mu r, we get a higher uh, mag uh, magnetic permeability and also we get a higher impedance or inductance. But unfortunately, at the same time, with a higher magnetic permeability, we go to the lower frequency range. So the issue is that the more mu r I create, the lower my frequency band is. Which means if I need to have a higher frequency, I cannot use a material with a very high mu r. And the same for nickel zinc. Nickel zinc has a much lower magnetic permeability. And this needs to be considered when you know your frequency which needs to be filtered. So as next, and here again, permeability is much more complicated. Actually, it is complex. So we have two parts. The one is the mu prime and the other one is the mu double prime. The mu prime is the inductive part. And on the right picture, we can see the uh, blue curve, which reflects the mu prime. The mu double prime is the resistive part. Actually, this is when the choke creates losses. So a choke or a filter or a ferrite. And this is uh, shown with a yellow curve here. So actually this is similar for all different materials. We have one frequency, uh, we have a frequency range. Up to this, we have a very nearly ideal inductor. And above this frequency, the losses start to increase and I get a choke. And this means 
depending on your application, you need to know if you need a DC DC, uh, DC DC converter and inductor, then you want to have low losses. And if you need low losses, your mu prime needs to be high and your mu double prime needs to be low. And it's the opposite. If you want to have a filter, then you're looking for a ferrite or a choke. You want to have high losses, which means the mu double prime needs to be high. And therefore you can see that even for your chosen material, manganese zinc or nickel zinc, it depends in which application you use it and in which frequency you use it. So this is just as a short start. Today, I want only to look at about losses and choke when I use my filter or my, my inductor as a filter. And this means my mu double prime needs to be high. So EMI and EMC. So first of all, what is EMI? What is EMC? Hmm. To make it very simple, EMI is electromagnetic interference. And this is the problem where EMC is the electromagnetic compatibility. And this is the solution. This is a very simple way to describe this. And then we have four different EMI coupling modes. So the most important are the radiated emission or the conductive emissions. But then we have also inductive or capacitive. Now, if you go to an EMC lab, you will be tested for radiated emission and conducted emission, which means you have two different tests. One, you test how does your, um, your application work when it gets disturbed from any other point via air or via cable? And the second way you test is how does your application um, Im impacts the surrounding area, either radiated or conducted. And then finally, you receive, maybe you have seen this already, after some hours, you receive a test. So this is a typical spectrum analyzer waveform. So in this waveform on the left indicates that you have conducted noise. So in this example, it's a main supply cable from the equipment under test, which means we can see here in the lower frequency range, the red line would be the limit, but the blue curve is the measurement results. And you can see, no, this doesn't work. You will not pass the test. And this means you've, you've failed and you need to do something. You need to change something in your design. And in an ideal world, after filtering, after putting some good components, either common mode chalk or maybe X, Y caps, you will have this measurement result. And this is where we want to go. Today, I want to show you how to find the right component to make the best filtering. Because first, you can only see a frequency and a dB value. And now, how to find the right inductor, which you buy with inductance value. So first of all, the insertion loss is given, and this is A. This is, uh, here you can see it, uh, how we call it, A in dB. So the insertion loss is the effectiveness of a filter. And usually, as I mentioned, the um, uh, insertion loss is given in dB. Now, how to find the right impedance of the needle choke when I only know the insertion loss? So this is the formula and we can see, in this case, we have ZA and ZB. And this means this is a source impedance and the low imp load impedance. To make it very simple, we can assume that the source impedance and the load impedance is most of the time identical. There are a few cases where it is not the case, but for the calculation, we can assume that ZA is identical to ZB. And finally, ZF is the impedance of the ferrite or choke. Well, now I need to change this equation because I want to calculate ZF, which means by just doing some formation, I get the formula for ZF. And as I just mentioned before, ZA and ZB can be assumed to be identical. And now if we need take the example from just before, if we have a voltage supply, we assume that the uh, impedance is something around 10 ohms. In case of a data line, you might have 50 ohms, 75 or 90 ohms, or maybe also higher value. But for voltage supply, it's usually 10 ohms. Now, let's take an example out of this. Let's say we have seen on a picture or on a measurement what we have seen before that we need a 20 dB attenuation at one megahertz. And we know, as I mentioned before, it's a voltage supply. 
It can be any other um, application, but in this case, we just assume that we need 20 dB at one megahertz in a voltage supply. So the voltage supply indicates that we take for ZA and ZB 10 ohms. And now by inputting all in the formula, the calculation is in this case very easy. And that is why I've chosen this example. So finally for ZF, we get 180 ohms, which means I need a choke which has 180 ohm at one megahertz. And that's very simple to find because this is always given in the data sheet. Now, for those who don't like to calculate, there's a much simpler way to find out which ZF value you need actually, because I can draw this one here in a one picture in a graph. And this is actually my graph. And with the same example, when I want to have 20 dB, I get by reading out and checking the green curve because the green curve reflects the 10 ohm curve, I get the same 180 ohms. Maybe you choose a component with 190 or 170 ohms, but this will not make a big difference. But finally, you can see out of this graph and this graph is valid for all products, for all competitors. So this is nothing which is related to one product. This is not related to one series or one supplier. This is general, can be generally used because this graph only reflects the calculation we have seen before and not a special chemit component. So also here, the result would be a choke with 180 ohm. But at this point, we just have defined the impedance. We did not define if it's a differential mode or common mode choke. So now we need to know what is the difference between differential mode or common mode. Well, it's very simple. We can see here a differential mode is a signal or interference which goes only in opposite directions. So from phase or line to plus or neutral or uh, to minus or neutral, whatever. It's the blue arrows. A common mode signal, which is most of the time also an interference, goes in the same direction. And an example why this can happen, this can be a radiated emission. Just imagine this here is a 10 meter long cable and I'm standing here with let's say my smartphone or anything else. And the interference which is coming from the waves from the smartphone, they don't uh, care if this is a plus or a minus, if this is a phase or line or neutral, they just say, oh, happy, I'm happy. There's a couple line. Well, let's go there and run away. And this is common mode signal. So most of the time, a common mode signal can be seen as something which comes from radiated emission and goes into the cable. So the path to just close it goes over earth or ground. So this is why I have put here a third arrow. Now, when I know that I have differential mode or common mode, it's very simple to find the right component. The differential mode choke is always with two connections, a common mode choke always with four connection, which means only one line needs to be filtered. I take a ferrite or a choke, a line filter, a bead, whatever. And please don't forget to use capacitors if you want to create an L filter, a T filter or a pi filter. Because depending on the frequency band, one component might not be enough. Sometimes it's not enough to use just a capacitor or an inductor. Sometimes you need to use both items or more of them. In common mode, you filter both lines, so plus and minus or phase neutral, however you call it. And you can see here a simple example. Here we have two wires, two copper wires wound around one core with the same number of turns. This is very important. And this is a common mode choke. At the same time, also here for your voltage supply, please don't forget to use capacitors, maybe an X or an Y capacitor if it's an AC mains. Now, how do common mode choke work? So here's an example and we can see first the green arrows show the differential mode signal. Differential mode signal, what could that be? For example, this could be a USB cable and this is data plus line and data minus line, which means the signal goes on one side into the device and on the other side in the opposite direction. Well, I don't want to filter my signal for sure. And in this case, I need a component which does not filter differential mode. So what happens here? Now try to see this one three-dimensional and let's take the right-hand rule and put your thumb over the wire and just imagine 
how the magnetic field inside the core will be created. Well, believe it or not, the magnetic field out of this turn here will be clockwise. And if we go back and do the same rule with the right hand rule, we will see that the magnetic field would go counterclockwise. But if there's a magnetic field and the identical magnetic field going into opposite directions with the same amount, nothing will happen and this signal will not be filtered. Actually, for a differential mode signal, it doesn't see any component. It's only maybe a little bit RDC losses. So now let's take the common mode interference and most of the time common mode is interference. And this one, as the arrow go in opposite direction, if you now use the right hand rule, you will see that both windings want to create a magnetic field which goes clockwise. Well, this is possible. But now you put energy into the core. Where does the energy go? The energy will be changed or will be created into heat. And if you put heat somewhere and heat, uh, energy never got lo get lost or gets more or get less, this means that the common mode interference is reduced. You can see this with the smaller red arrows here. So this is how a common mode choke acts. But now we have still not answered the most important questions. How to find out if a noise is common mode or differential mode? Well, you have to wait until the last slide, then I will answer this question. First of all, I want to show you some winding styles we can offer you in the common mode chokes. Winding style means, let's take this inductor here and let's say we have one more than one winding layer and with winding layer, just imagine here is a cut through the item and you see here through the copper wire and this copper wire is wound around the core and then you make one layer and at the end you make a second layer and the third you make another layer and so on. You can see many many copper wires are here on the core. Unfortunately there's always a capacitive coupling of different layers and this limits my maximum frequency the resonance frequency. So the best would be to have an uh, infinity uh, big core, which means that there is no capacitive coupling, but this is I, not possible to create. So we will always have induct um, capacitive coupling. And to you reduce the capacitive coupling, or when you reduce the capacitive coupling, the fre frequency, the resonance frequency increases. And how you can do this? Let's go a little bit deeper. So two different winding styles. You can see the pictures on the right side. Ob obviously there's no difference, but the winding style is different, which means normally you start at one point and then you start winding around your core. One, two, three, four, five, until you get to the end and then all is full with copper. And then you do a second layer, nine, 10, 11, 16, and then you maybe do a third layer and then you are at the end of the coil. Now the capacitive coupling between layer one and two has not that much impact but the capacitive layer between number one and 16 has an impact and limits my maximum frequency. Now, what is divided winding? Divided, wind, divided winding means we are winding in sectors which are separated. And then we don't have this connection between layer one and 16, only between one and eight. And on the uh, opposite side, we have the, the connection between 17 and 24. And this is actually what we use in those two styles in the wind, uh, divided winding types. So no different material, no different copper, no different in length or anything else, no difference in size. It's just the style of winding. And if I do some measurements, I will find out and the red curve shows me the divided winding either for this style or for that style. And I can see my self resonance frequency is higher. So at this point, I can see I can use this choke until mm, 100 kilohertz and the other one goes up to 400 or let's say 300 or something kilohertz. So just by changing the winding style, no changing of the material. Also, the core style. I can do some changes in the core style. And what we have here is the so-called hybrid mode choke. Hybrid choke means, I don't know how to name this. For me, it's a nose. Here I have an additional nose. You can also see it here. This would be a standard core. And this is the additional core with the nose. What you see here, the gray turns, the gray circles, these are my copper wires. And you can see this is the one plus, this is minus or phase neutral or whatever. 
And in the standard case, the magnetic field goes through the material and you have a common mode in, um, filter. But with this additional nose here, there's also a part of the magnetic field which goes also through the air and takes a shortcut to make it a short way. Let's say this is a lazy magnetic field. It doesn't want to go the long way. It just want to go the short way. In this case, this coil only acts as differential mode choke, the green uh, magnetic field. So what you have in addition with just putting in these two noses on this side, you will have an additional differential mode attenuation. I will have um, measurement results in the next two, in the next slide. But before, I want to show you the same as dual mode choke. And this is for the bigger cores, so for the um, oval shape core. And actually, it's the same effect without using noses. But here, we have here the, let's say, plus, here the minus, line neutral, whatever. And again, here is my copper wire. And by using the oval shape core, there might be parts of magnetic field which take the path through the air to not go the long way. It's again, the green ones are the lazy magnetic fields and they go the short way. And finally, for sure, what you will get is you have a higher differential mode attenuation, which is reflected by the red curve. So what we see is by just using a different core shape, we can increase also the differential mode attenuation. At the same time, we need to consider when you look at the self resonance frequency that this is a little bit reduced. So there is one advice I can give you, always read the data sheet. Sometimes this might be a good option to filter common mode and differential mode at the same time, but, but please consider the self resonance frequency. In this case, we are talking about AC coils and here we are higher than 10 megahertz. I would assume that this is still enough if it's instead of um, something like 30, if it's only 20 megahertz. Now, how to find the right inductor? So what is most important to find the right choke is A, the frequency range to filter, which indicates which core material is the best for me, either manganese zinc or nickel zinc or whatever. The second one, and I've seen, uh, shown the calculation, is the attenuation to calculate the impedance and or the inductance. And those two belong together, the maximum current and the maximum size recommendation because they will decide which type I can finally use. Do I need a low profile item or do I need a small size item or maybe I have a high current? Small size, small size and high current at the same time will not work because high current always means that I need a thick copper wire. So this is the first indicator which component is right. I cannot say that for an automotive application, for example, always use this one and for another, always use that one. So it's just from, from your recommendation of the size or the current. Now, let's have a, a short look into the Kemet product portfolio. And as we have seen before, the small current series, which are also small size series, Let's say small size. I don't know if it's small size SS series, but I prefer SSR series. Um, this is a name which comes from Japan. And the SC series is for high currents. And this is everything which we can see here on a round coil. First, let's have a look at the SSR series. And the SSR series is usually available, available depending on which size I'm using up to five amps. We make a difference always between um, vertical, which is H and uh, sorry, vertical, which is V and horizontal construction, which is H and the same for here. Horizontal always means that the core is lying. And then also a high impedance or wide range impedance. High impedance means one high impedance at one certain point. Wide range of impedance. Well, I guess this is clear. So the part numbering system at this point is also very simple. SSR is the series. The 21N is the core size code, which means 21 is something like 22 by 22 millimeter. And this fits to all competitor pads. So this is no Kemet own design. All products from the competitors which look similar have the same pinning and you can replace them with a Kemet type. Here is where we see um, 
H for horizontal, V for vertical, and the sectional winding structure would have an S at this point. Well, then the rated current and the inductance, which is very simple to create your own component. Also for the SCR series, for those products which are in a round core, we have the same vertical or horizontal type J or JH. And if you put an S in the middle, then you have a three phase vertical or three phase horizontal type. Maximum currents for sure go here much higher up to 40 amps. And finally, how to uh, read this here, there's one additional point, there's windings, triple windings, double winding, single windings or double windings. And depending on how, it's just a thicker to use more square, uh, square of the wire to have a thicker wire to have higher currents. And again, JH and J for vertical or horizontal type. Well, I'm missing one answer to the question, um, how to distinguish if you have a, dis a differential mode or common mode shock. Well, an EMI core or cable uh, core, snap fer uh, ferrite or however you call it, is actually a common mode shock when all single wires inside the cable are wound around the core. Well, take one cable from your um, USB cable and put it around the core, you will always have a common mode shock. Only if you put a single wire around the core for sure, then you have a differential mode shock. And this is the best way, and I can prove this because I have done this myself in an EMC lab to prove if you have a common mode or differential mode noise. Just take a cable, put it through an, a, a cable uh, ferrite, you can get them a snap version or like, uh, like this with a ring core and then just do the measurement again and if you see some better results then you know it's a common mode choke uh, it's a common mode interference if you have no change then it's a differential mode and this is very simple to find the right component and then just looking at the frequency range which will finally give you an indication of which frequency you need to filter and this gives uh, you the material you want to use and with this, I'm at the end of my presentation for today. Um, I'm now open to question just for you to know the next presentation will be on next Monday, Dispelling Inductor Myth, which is the fifth and last presentation of this series. And this will give you some, uh, some four of the most interesting questions or myths which we want to uh, talk about. And with this, Samuel, you are uh, on and can ask me questions. Thank you, Alex. Uh, wonderful presentation. Uh, as always, I definitely learned something new. Um, so great job. Um, so before we get into Q&A, uh, if anyone happens to have any questions, uh, please remember to submit them into the Q&A box and we will go over those. Um, so the first question uh, that we got is uh, for automotive grade um, chokes. Do we offer those? Do we offer automotive yeah. grade uh, differential and uh, yes, so we do have also automotive chokes. It, it, not all components are yet available as automotive and uh, non-automotive. So the most of them have only industrial grade, but we do have uh, also automotive grade chokes. Perfect. And then uh, the next question is, is, could you please explain again how EMI core is used to distinguish between common mode and differential mode? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, it's uh, it's very simple. The, uh, when you have a common mode noise and, um, and let's say the, the uh, EMI core is actually a common mode choke. So when you put a cable through the wire, it's actually the same like a common mode choke with one turn. For sure, you can put on more turns, two, three, four, which will just increase the impedance. But finally, if you do see a change in the measurement in your, of your spectrum analyzer, you can assume that this is a common mode noise. If you have no change after measurement, then it means uh, most likely it's more differential mode noise. So this is just the first indicator to test uh, and see what is the problem and to find the right component. Perfect, thank you. Um, and then uh, this one, this next one is for hybrid um or, or for the hybrid or dual mode choke uh what is the benefit of using the hybrid or dual mode choke versus a common mode choke mm -hmm. let's take the example for power supply because in a data line it makes maybe no sense 
and if you have a uh, power supply and you want to filter both because if it's a DC line for DC 5 volt any signal is or any uh, thing which is not 5 volt it is, um, is something is an interference you don't want to have and by using a common mode choke in a dual or hybrid mode uh, you don't need to use an additional uh, differential mode choke and you uh, have one item less on the board. For sure, if you don't have a differential mode noise, you don't need this component. But uh, if you have both, you can combine two components in one item. Perfect. Um, this next one we might need a clarification on. It says you have courses for this module. Um, I'm assuming uh, maybe that means that we might send out the information uh, for this module or for this uh, webinar. Uh, if that's the case, yes, we will be sending out the presentation and the recording uh, within the next day or so. So please look for a link for that. And with that, thank you, Alex, for taking the time to present to us. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Yeah, thank you all from my side, also from my side. And I hope to see you soon again.